But now what I want to do is talk a little bit about the work that we've been doing on the Google Earth team to bring the next dimension of maps, which is 3D. And so I'm going to give an overview of what we've been doing and a peek into the future. So it uh, seems to be a lot of history lessons today, so I thought I would do the same. Um, earlier, Brian showed this shot of uh, Keyhole. So this is the technology that uh, was acquired by Google and has found its way into all of our mapping products, including Google Earth and Google Maps. Um, and here, the 3D that we have is terrain data. And this works really great when you're trying to model the Matterhorn, because it's really large. Uh, it's a great way to represent natural features. But when it comes to a cityscape, you get these buildings that are kind of uh, flattened down on top of the terrain, and it really looks surreal um, and doesn't really give you any sense at all of what uh, this place is like. By 2005, we started to introduce our first 3D buildings, and here we basically took the footprints of buildings and extruded them up to the height of the building. And so, for example, here in New York City, you can start to get a sense of the the grandness of the buildings in, uh, in New York City here, but by no means does this actually make you feel like you're there. In 2006, we introduced our first photorealistic 3D models. So here we're actually taking actual images and texturing them onto the side of models. And this does a great job for showing detail of select landmark buildings. So here, for example, is San Francisco City Hall, off in the distance there is Transamerica building, yeah, in just kind of not much else in between. So you have this sort of desolate landscape that, uh, that really just leaves you wanting more. By 2008, we really ramped up our ability to get more 3D models um, in here. So here, for example, is a, a shot of San Francisco where we have uh, lots of different um, buildings. So in, in urban areas like this and urban cores in San Francisco, New York, and other places, we're able to get a, a pretty good coverage um, to the point where we now have millions of models in dozens of countries around the world. But there are some issues here. For one, the imagery that's here is coming from multiple sources. Um, it could be aerial imagery, it could be coming from a user model. In some cases, it might even be a synthetic texture that doesn't represent the actual image at all. And so it creates some inconsistency that just doesn't look right. Also, not every model is actually, or every building is modeled, and the gaps also kind of break that illusion. Uh, finally, you can see that we still have 3D buildings, like you can see Coit Tower, the view of it is still laid down on top of the terrain, even though we have the 3D model next to it. So we knew we wanted to do something better, and we wanted to do something that would be comprehensive, something that would be consistent, and something that we could do at scale that would allow us to work towards our goal of modeling the world in 3D. So how are we going to do about doing this? So what we're doing is we're using automated technology to extract 3D from aerial images. Now, this isn't a new idea. This is something we've actually been working on for a number of years. But the quality just wasn't really there um, to meet the standards for Google Earth. That is until now. So let me describe how this works. So this starts with planes. And these planes are equipped with custom Google design camera systems where they're actually gathering what we call oblique imagery, where we're taking these 45 degree angle shots from each of the cardinal directions and directly down so that we can get each side of structures in an area to make sure that we have what we need to actually create an accurate model. Then the planes are flown in a very tightly controlled pattern to make sure that there's a sufficient amount of overlap so that we can get a complete picture and be able to represent uh, large metropolitan areas. So then what we do is we use a technique that's called stereophotogrammetry to extract the 3D model from the multitude of images that we've collected. So here you can see again is San Francisco City Hall. And this is actually reconstructed from just the images that we've taken of these various different angles. And I mean, it almost looks like an old clay model. But in this case, this clay model has been sculpted by technology rather than by hands. So the next step is we actually, for each point 
or pixel on the model, we have to find the best possible color or image to match that point. And we go through the collection and this multitude of images we have to find the best one for each location. And we generate what's called a textured 3D mesh. And this is basically the building block that is necessary for a 3D graphics system to be able to render a 3D scene like this. So it's great if we have this really beautiful detailed model. We're still not done because we need to be able to produce this and serve it in a way that can reach all of our users wherever they are in the world. And so to do that, we have to package up that information in a way that is efficient to store and serve, transmit over networks anywhere in the world to whatever devices our users are using to look at this data. So, you know, all this theory is great, but there's nothing like seeing it in a real product. So I'd like to show you that now. So if we could switch to the tablet, please. So here we are again. We can see that we're uh, at San Francisco's City Hall. And this is a beautiful view. I mean, it looks like I'm just hovering above it taking a photograph. But what I'm actually able to do here is interact with this just by twisting my fingers. And you can see not only is City Hall a beautiful model, but everything around it is modeled as well, including all the surrounding buildings and even the trees and landscaping. And the consistency of this really does create that illusion that you're flying over the city. So let's do that now. So let's take a uh, little flight here along Market Street. Again, you'll notice that every single building here is completely modeled. And, and that's important because we're trying to create magic here. We're trying to create that illusion that you're just flying over the city. Almost as if you're in your own personal helicopter. So here we are heading towards downtown. And let's just spin around and down to the ferry building. So Google Earth is a fantastic tool for people to be able to explore the world. But one of the challenges we've had is it's been difficult for people to be able to go in and explore the world in 3D and to discover new things. So what I want to show you now is an example of a new UI that we have uh, that we call the tour guide, which is really a way for people to search and explore uh, areas of interest that they might want to find. So for example here, we're back in San Francisco. And I'm just going to swipe this over to the side. And you'll see that there's a, a list of areas of interest that I might want to go explore. So maybe you're a Giants fan. So let's uh, go check out AT&T Park. Just one more second. This is a technology demonstration, so. <laughs> All right, here we go. So again, if I want to come in and check out AT&T Park, we'll take a flight. And now we'll actually do a circle around the location. Again, here, giving you a great sense of, of what this location is like. And then to finish, let's just uh, fly along the Embarcadero here. And here we are back at Coit Tower, but you'll notice that now everything in the landscape is modeled in 3D, um, really giving you that sense that you're there. Can we switch back to slides, please? So as you can see, this is just a, a sneak peek of some of the technology that we have available. But uh, I'm proud to say that in the coming weeks, we're going to bring this new 3D imagery and the first of our metro areas modeled in 3D to both Android and iOS devices. 
And given that we really want to make sure that we model, you know, the whole world to the point where everyone can, uh, can be able to see their own communities, we're going to be bringing, uh, we expect by the end of the year that we'll have communities of over 300 million people modeled in this new technology. Thanks very much. Back to you, Brian.